Now that we've copied our list of genes from Partech, what we can now do is paste these genes into this networking program called String in order to pull out the biology. String stands for the search tool for the retrieval of interacting genes and proteins. And one of the greatest things about String is it's free. Um, as I said, it's a networking program, so it's going to group these genes or connect the genes that we've put in based on its database. And its database draws from interactions it finds in the literature, in homologous genes and other species, and also in co-expression rates. So it's actually working off the data itself and not only what people say about it. I, I really like String. I think it's definitely a step up from David, which is another free program because not only will it pull out the overrepresented biological units, but it'll also, like I said, group the genes based on interactions. So in order to use it, it's pretty easy. All we're going to do is hit multiple proteins since we're searching for 130. Um, I'm just going to put my cursor in this window and paste my list of genes in here. We can go down to organisms. I want to select Homo sapiens because that's what we're looking at. And we're going to hit search. The next window is giving you all the genes that it recognizes in our the list that we put in. Um, you can see some of these aren't characterized genes, and so therefore no entry is found. Um, if I remember correctly, out of our 130 genes that we put in, only 10 of them weren't recognized, which is pretty common for a lot of this bioinformatics software you use. It's not going to recognize all your, it's not going to have data on all the um, genes that you put in. So we're just going to hit continue. And now what you will see is this network that's brought up. So these are the genes. So within our 100, now 120 genes that we have, these are the connections that it finds based on its database. Since this is my first time using string in one of my videos, what, before we dig into the results, what I'd like to do is kind of describe some of the aspects of this platform. I think it's they're very unique. Uh, some of the options you might have in using it. Uh, this first tab here is viewers. Right now we're on network view, so we're looking at the genes kind of space put into a, a network form, but we can actually download the experiments where th a list of experiments where those relationships were derived, databases that contain the biological information um, String is using to characterize them, and uh, text or publications associated with these genes. We can also look at the relationships they have within itself based on expression data or where it is in the chromosome. Uh, these options typically work better when you have less uh, genes or proteins than we have now. I believe the cutoff is less than 50, so we can't really use these with our data set. Uh, we can go to the second tab here, Legend. This tab is just giving you more information on what on the color coding that String is using to not only characterize the genes but the interactions between them. Um, given down here is the evidence for the connections. Uh, the different types. If you wanted to see that evidence directly, you can just click on any of these edges or connections between the genes. And what it will do is show the two different genes and the types of evidence it is drawing from to make that connection. And you can look up any of these things. Um, also, it is giving you a combined score for that connection. So the higher the score, the more confidence it has that these two particular genes interact. And what's nice, too, is we can filter this, this network based on this confidence score. We can display things that we only feel have a, a certain confidence above or below a, a, a certain criteria. Uh, we can go to the next one, settings. Um, this is kind of nice in that right now we're displaying it as evidence, but we could also display it, again, as confidence. The thicker the line, the more confidence we would have in that connection. We can also display it as molecular action, so that if we know that these two genes interact and the direction of that interaction, we can actually uh, display that, or a string will display this on the network. Um, and we can also remove any genes that don't connect to any other on our network. Um, there's some other um, options that you have. Again, you can uh, filter based on the confidence. Right now we're medium confidence for all our connections. Um, we also have, there is also um, tabs to export any of this data, any of the graphs, and uh, definite or di certain uh, 
criteria you can use to cluster the data, how the network act actually looks and how it's organized. But right now what I'd like to do is kind of concentrate on this analysis. So let's talk about these genes that we now pulled out of our, our data set. So the first thing that strikes me about this analysis is how connected all these genes are. And in fact, this is kind of what we, in bioinformatics terms, we call breaking p-values. And when they don't actually give you a p-value, they said, well, it's way low. <laughs> it's so low we can't even calculate it. That um, given that we have 120 genes that we can actually look at from our original list, they expected 182 connections just based on random chance, but we're getting 1,479. So, and you can just look at it, and <laughs> this is so connected. Uh, what's cool now is, so these are all connected. Now what we should do is be able to find similar biological um, functions associated with them. Again, I think this worked in the fact that th all these genes have similar fold changes in all the comparisons we looked at. And so therefore, we would expect them to be related, and then sure enough, they are. We can look at some of the biological processes involved. Uh, the top one is mitotic cell cycle, which shouldn't come as a surprise. I mean, we're looking at cancer. These are genes that are up in a form of the papillary renal cell carcinoma that is more aggressive, and therefore we're seeing a lot more cell division, which we would expect. But I guess the question is, why are we seeing that? And we can start looking here and coloring these things. Um, a lot of, you're seeing a lot of chromatid segregation. You know, a lot of these genes are involved in chromosome segregation. So that's that might be something we might look at as a possible reason for the differences in, in the forms. Uh, we can also look at, let's see if I can go down here, regulation of cell cycle processes. These are obviously probably something that would be a good thing to look at. But what I was looking at for was the positive regulation of mitotic cell division. So we can color those red. Let's do that. And I think down here, there's a negative regulation of the cell cycle as well. We'll color those blue. Um, a lot of genes, again, what is it that this is doing is, is showing you the biology behind our, our genes. And now what we're doing is coloring it so we can get an idea of maybe who are some of the key players in this network. And obviously this network is an important with aggressive forms of papillary renal cell carcinoma. So if we can figure out this network, maybe we can figure out something or a, a potential therapy to try to prevent this. Uh, and again, we can go down here, chromosome, cell division. I think I saw a DNA replicate. Oh, no. DNA repair, we can click on that one. We can go down here. Um, a lot of these genes are are located on the spindle, 22 of those. The odds of that happening are 5 times 10 to the negative 16th for us to get 22 genes associated with a spindle in our 120 original genes. Uh, we can click on this. You can see most of these things are in the nucleum. And that's, and that's what I've found is that when you get these clusters, they typically tend to be in the same part of the cell, which you would expect. Not only that, but they have the same similar structure and they're known previously to probably interact together. So again, more evidence that, you know, what we pulled out of here is relevant. So again, we can color the all the ones in the nuclear lumen yellow and go down here. Uh, I thought this was interesting. There's a one carbon pool by folate. So this is a pathway involved in um, nucleotide uh, metabolism, which would obviously be important in... Uh, cancer. So we can circle that one. So now as we go up here to our network, now all those genes are color coded with the types of biological reactions we had. And again, these were the folate molecules and you can see that they are very tightly correlated. We can look at some of our genes. Aurora kinase A is a rock star of um, Cancer, again, red was the color that a positive stimulation of cell cycle. You can see all these. BERT5, if we want to get more information on that gene, we can just click on it. It'll give you a short summary and links to other forms of information on that. This is what all this information is telling me, is that this cluster that we pulled out in our meta-analysis is very, very, very connected. Not only is there way more connections than we would have guessed by random chance, but all of these genes seem to be located in 
pretty much the same area of the cell, the nucleus, and they all seem to be involved in similar functions, that being cell cycle or things that are associated with that. Uh, not only that, but uh, like I said, a few rock stars are coming out. Aurora Kinase A catches my attention. And again, this is just based on your own personal exper ex you know, experience. And that if you work on papillary cancer, a lot of these genes are just going to pop out at you. Um, here's a one, another one. Topor isomerase 2A seems to be connected to a lot of different things and probably has the most connections out of any of these genes in my network. That might be a potential target for, uh, say, this, this form of papillary renal cell carcinoma. Um, some things that normally are supposed to inhibit cell cycle seem to be going up, but don't seem to be working, obviously, because, you know, this is a cancer cell. So what I'm going to do now, so again, this is just kind of a way I wanted to show you string and some of the things that you can gather from it. Um, and I, I think in some of the other clusters that I'm going to demonstrate on, you're going to kind of see how this this won't be such a, a rat's nest and that'll kind of separate a little more into specific clusters. But so what we're going to do in the next video or is basically use another program, Pathway Analysis, to or Pathway Studio, I'm sorry, to, to take a look at this, these genes and see what uh, that uh, bioinformatics software has to say about this. Again, it's another networking program, but not all programs have everything. And so it's always nice to, you know, use something different. So that's what we'll be doing in the next analysis. We'll take all these 120 genes and start throwing it through different programs like Pathway Studio and see if we get similar results. And can we get a better biological picture of this data set and how it relates to the more aggressive form of this cancer?